I would like to focus on is on one aspect which I think has been underplayed. Uh, that is one in uh, the Sussex Manifesto <coughs> talking about the importance of bridging professionals. They have talked about bridging professionals. At the same time, some are reflecting on the same way in the Swaraj Manifesto, there is also discussion about the importance of pilot projects. And I feel these two aspects I would like to underline because I think uh, very uh, foundationally, if, the, if any new manifesto has to go forward, along with the new manifesto also I think would emerge new methodologies. If you are looking at innovation, if we want to have a new object for innovation, we also I think need to have new methodology for innovation studies. There are some understandings which has emerged from the existing innovation studies to some extent which is reflected in, uh, in uh, what Adrian had presented. We understand what is the meaning of lock-in about the pathways of innovation and what, it, what its consequences are for anybody who wants to change and intervene and change innovation. So these are some of the understandings which we have from the earlier generation of innovation studies which does inform the current manifesto. But the new manifesto, as it puts forward new objectives, also uh, been, uh, there are new methodologies which need to be um, uh, uh, to develop. I'm not here talking about new methodologies in science and technology as such, but I'm talking about new methodologies in innovation studies itself. I, I think there is a very dire need for it because my understanding of engagement with innovation studies uh, since uh, 74 or 72 has shown uh, to the uh, uh, has shown me that the issue is much more complex than what I had ever imagined and I really wonder whether we have enough understanding to be able to shape it and it. and it is because of this reason I feel these two aspects which have been put forward I would like to focus them as key points for us to be able to work on in order to be able to make policy recommendations which are a little bit well, better informed. Somewhere in both these manifesto, there seems to be a kind of a underlying complaint addressed as if things, what needs to be done is already known. What is needs to be done is those who have to take the decisions are better informed and they act. I do not know whether that is true. Is it only a question of uh, of the governments or of other people of just being knowing, better informed and acting. And even if it is so, even if it's a question of policy makers making changes, do we understand enough, are we in a position to be able to make better policy recommendations? About 15, 20 years ago when we had a new director coming here in the stats, in this very same hall, one took the initiative of organizing a dialogue with between us scientists who are working on innovation and STS in general with our new director to, treat, uh, to talk to him about what are the kind of problems which we face as innovation professionals in communicating with government and communicating with the other agency to talk about the importance of this particular area. And one of the things which came up is the fact that many of the policy recommendations we make are taken by the different departments and read it and it's, it's put there somewhere in a document, it's not actually implemented. I think the other way around, we can also think to what extent have our policy recommendations been in such a way as to be as connected. The connecting with the users is valid not only for grassroots, uh, in the case of grassroots innovations of people or for poor, it is valid in each and every kind of a sector. And in order to be more effective, if you have a new objective, I think there is a need, this particular need for a new, uh, uh, search for new methodologies, a more self more self-reflexivity. And I say this because at the heart of innovation is, a, innovation means changing, and a changing in cognitive processes in the, in the, basically in the culture. And cognitive changes are essentially social historical changes. Understanding how do you in a, intervene in a social historical change to see a new cognition, new method, and new values, is something which I think needs a, a, a much more kind of a work. And for that, if there are more pilot studies, more bridging professionals, I think would be just a starting point. 
and then from maybe from that kind of a study we can have a few stylized facts. I do not know to what extent there are stylized facts available on some of these areas. It will not be the same for each vasicta. Even deciding on the different kind of domains, if you want to have a people-oriented policy change in this particular direction, which is sustainable, which is pro-people, what are the kind of stylized facts our intervention has taught us so far? What are the kind of you know, uh, stylized which, uh, facts which we know we want to take a, a different kind of, whether specifically oriented to urban poor or... I think there is this whole kind of a need which is required, precisely coming from the nature of what innovation is. Somewhere, in spite of all the changes which have taken place, we still seem to think of innovation, thinking, cognition, essentially as an individual process. And if, if there is one particular person who comes forward with a new innovation, I think it's very good thing that we, we be fated, we give them encouragement that people's image about who innovates gets changed. But that's just a starting point. Because any innovation means a change in the, it is a, embedded in a whole kind of structures, whether they're institutional, whether they're input, output, where are all kind of changes in order to be able to bring sustainability, not only environmental, sustainability of the innovation means so many other networks need to be changed. How do we intervene and to be able to make that? So I, what my own uh, practical kind of work for the last 15 years is, what it just taught me is the fact that the the work for creating a new community of practice is extremely difficult. I started out with going out to say, you tell me what you need, you, I will try and do for you. And then you realize that it doesn't work in that kind of a way. People might say that I work in the area of education for the last, uh, of mathematics and science for the last 15 years, primary level. And people would say, yes, teach our children math and science. And you, with your own understanding, know that how important a very different kind of a learning is. Give us, give homework. How do you work with them to be able to communicate, so to say that even when they are, when they are playing, they are uh, please try. So you have to, you have to invent and innovate on the spot. And a whole lot of work, I think, the timeline for many of these things, I do not know whether our systems understand the timeline. I don't know whether anything can happen in three years. If people have done, one would really like to know. It takes a much longer period. And what has been the role of funding agencies is something which we need to ask. It's a really a research kind of a problem to understand. Can we, what are the stylized facts about the, the role played by funding agencies in actually bringing about sustainable innovation? So there are a whole lot of questions which, uh, which emerge from uh, really for, from the, when we change the focus, we need to have this type of a different kind of a practice. And I think the role of bridging profi uh, 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 professionals, it becomes important. On the uh, one hand, what are the kind of studies we do? Sometimes we tend to do studies which are big survey and correlation and significance. What I call it the survey significance syndrome. On one hand, if you want to have it, call it. On the other hand, we have a very, very, very descriptive kind of a studies. I think in innovation studies, we need to be able to move towards a different type of an innovation studies. And in that, I think there are a lot of developments which have been taking place, even social sciences, which does not seem to have impacted on, uh, on innovation studies to the extent that I know of. I can talk about whether it is design research, or whether it is, e even if you want to go into the development of local theories, a la uh, grounded theory kind of work, there are a different kind of tools, I think, which we would also need to be able to develop so that we, what we would uh, recommend are, um, are not purely anecdotal, are not purely based on things, it needs to be also supported with what? Maybe you do not go for the new old terms of uh, validation, but what are our new terms of validation? How do we kind of a record? So, and in this particular process, I think there is a tremendous important role for academics to play. We can uh, praise and we can support, and it's important also, the innovative work which is being done at the ground level, at the grassroots. But for, I think, every one lakh of uh, innovations which take place, I see, and I'm very disturbed by the crores which are not taking place. In my own small area of work, I see how difficult. When you go into a workplace, you see 10 things which could be done so easily, but you find that it's not happening.